Hey there Wargamers, this is Justin Cloud with my fifth episode of my Tactical Tuesday series and I wanted to open up with something a little bit different than normal. Uh, many of you guys know that I paint for Brush for Hire and yesterday I worked a whole bunch on a couple of uh, Orc uh, single models. I believe this is a Mech Boy and a Shock Attack gun and I just want to show you guys kind of what I've been working on when I'm not playing games. So as you can see I I like using the airbrush to do some of the little glowing, lightning effects, things like that, but pretty pleased with the way this guy turned out thus far. Uh, hopefully Austin will not have to do too many touch-ups when I drop him off for the final okay. Uh, essentially the way the process works is um, I'm responsible for painting the models. He gives them a once-over to make sure they're to his liking and then he bases them. Uh, not that I can't base them, but since he goes over them with a uh, critical eye at the end anyway, he just goes ahead and does the basing. So this is the other guy. This is my favorite orc models because he's uh, sucking up a grot there and firing out of the gun. Definitely enjoy painting orcs. They're, they're uh, considerably different than painting like space marines or guard because they're just different. They have so much uh, little random bits and so forth on them. And I just think they're really cool. those hodgepodge materials that make his gun somehow work. Alright, so now that you guys have seen what I've been working on for my projects this week, I will get into the actual topic, which is continuing on with Tau and talking about fortifications, what you can use for Xenos options for fortifications, and uh, the various aspects along with that. So, here on the table you can see a unpainted um, Aegis line for uh, any Xenos. looks very Tau-ish. Uh, currently with the black and the green it looks very Necron-y, but show these off. These come off and we've got different colors. So you can change out the shield um, effect with a different color. I think my final color is actually going to be uh, orange not uh, green or blue. The orange just seems, out, seems to look good and fit well with the the towel even though my colors are uh, khaki and red the orange just looks really good. So anyways for the tactics this week I have before us the Aegis line and if you like this and you aren't familiar with it we're current, we just finished our Kickstarter with Brush for Hire to produce these. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below so that you can check them out. Uh, very affordable and a good alternative to the Aegis line because if you're not playing you know, Imperium, the Aegis line just doesn't fit with your army. So, in the back here, we've got a Forge World towel turret with burst cannons. Now, again, because I want my stuff to look more um, towy and not uh, Imperium, I went and ordered one of these from Forge World. I'll just pull it out here so you guys can get a close look at it. It's a good alternative to the quad gun. And I'll, you know, obviously I'll be proxying it with the quadman stats, but footprint's about the same, and you know, it looks good for Tau. I mean, that's it's a good turret. So that, along with these Aegis lines, makes you know for a good thematic-looking uh, set of battlefield terrain. Now, for the tactics with this, that I wanted to, to talk about. Uh, it's it goes without saying that in in fourth edition or fifth, sixth edition rather, the Aegis line is is pretty much an auto include in most armies. I played my weekly games this past Friday, and I have found that the problem with using this particular fortification or relying on cover period is you have to take into consideration heavy flamers, particularly with Tau. I mean, AP4 flamers that ignore cover, and those are absolutely brutal. You deep strike ne and, you know, next or in right next to the Tau uh, gun line, and you barbecue their Pathfinders, their Fire Warriors, whatever you want. And it's even worse on Pathfinders because. Their armor is even worse than a, a fire warrior, so uh, regular flamers are are brutal to them too. But um, aside from flamers, the Aegis line is really good. Um, you can sit there and camp behind it, obviously. And if you add the Dark Strider or not Dark Strider, excuse me, uh, Kadri Fireblade with a unit of fire warriors that are going to camp back, hold maybe hold an objective behind the line, put in base with your quad gun, and you got a ballistic skill five, you know, quad gun or Icarus. Most people probably win the quad, but in either case, a, a, a Ballista Skill 5 shot, which is awesome. And not to mention marker light options. So having him sit with that unit and have him fire that, that gun 
is great, and the squad gets to benefit from his, uh, I think it's volley, something like that, where if they don't move, they get to fire two shots, with, or one additional shot. I say that because at rapid fire range, they fire three instead of two. Um, that's a good option. Now, in addition to that, uh, I'm trying to talk with Austin about maybe designing a custom sky shield landing pad for me. After playing against some demons and getting just destroyed by flamers, even though that particular game that it happened in, I won, it was not very graceful. As soon as the flamers hit the table, I had a huge problem, and I lost. I had heavy, very heavy casualties. So I'm thinking maybe the sky shield landing pad, maybe with, you know, for Tau or Xenos, these types of uh, barriers being the outer rim, and obviously the structure being elevated, it would be great. The Tactically, the benefit of the sky shield landing pad is that it provides an invuln save, not a cover save. So your troops that are very squishy, particularly pretty much everything with Tau and even some Eldar, um, maybe Eldar Rangers, for example, um, you know, something like that, you put them in a place where the cover would normally be great, but they have an invuln save that you can't bypass with a flamer. That's that's awesome. That's brutal. I mean, you have very good or things that are very good at shooting, camping out on an elevated structure, which is going to give good lanes of fire and provide an invulnerability save. In addition to that, if you're running Tau and you've got any kind of deep strikers, deep striking units, you know, if there's no opportune place, you can just plop them on the landing pad and not drift, which is great. You know, so it gives you options for for placement, and your opponent's going to have to work around that structure. So I'm thinking. For Tau, particularly, that may be where my next uh, investment goes for, for structures or fortifications to bring in. I also think that, uh, as I noted in my, one of my previous videos, allying these guys with Space Marines, in addition to using that structure, is really going to make them uh, a tougher force. I mean, Tau are really good at shooting. They're not good at much other than that. So if you add in Space Marines, who are jack-of-all-trades, and then you increase the survivability of your gun lines, your opponent's going to have that much more to deal with. And I think that would be a good sound tactic. So, I would like to know what you guys think. Uh, feel free to sound off in the comments below and uh, let me know. You know, maybe, uh, maybe you guys have thought of something I haven't thought of, or maybe I've overlooked something. So, uh, in closing, I'm going to move these barricades a little bit closer so you guys get a good, good look. Get a good look. And as always, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. And happy wargaming. Forward here. Just give you guys a little pan out of the line, what it looks like, all the pieces that come with it, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.